events of God of War Chains of Olympus take place before the very first God of War, in the time period after Kratos kills his family and goes in service of the gods for 10 years. And during that time, he's asked by the gods to do multiple things, and the, the story of our game actually takes place in that time period. Following in the tradition of previous games in the series, the development team sought to put their personal spin on Greek mythology. I did a ton of research. I'm a bit of a history buff and, and a mythology buff as well. I found that if you're going to tackle a subject, you have to respect the subject. So we can't just do a facade of Greek architecture. You have to really understand what are the proportions, how big is the base compared to a column and compared to the top of it. There's going to be things like uh, Cyclopses, Minotaur, things that you've seen in other God of War games, and we wanted to make sure that we were faithful to that type of mythology. Um, of course, there's always a slight twist or spin that we'll, we'll put on things to make them, you know, bigger, badder than, than they may be represented in traditional mythology. I look at archetypes, these recurring themes in human storytelling. What's the most efficient way to, to communicate this? For example, if someone has to represent death, what do you need to put in there in order for him to look like death? Olympus has sent a message, and I am here to deliver it. And then I give the characters the tools, the proper tools that they need to survive in the environment that they live in. So take this message back to your little gods. Part of keeping the epic feel was developing a camera that captured the essence of the story. When we were designing the levels, we wanted to make sure that we took into account where the cameras were going to be at all times so that we knew that we were seeing just what we wanted to see, directing the player in the right way via the camera angles. We had to rewrite a new camera system for the game. We have artists who, who spend time making sure the shots are great and compositions are beautiful and whatnot, but at the same time, never sacrificing gameplay as a result of that. Fearing the wrath of the gods, or at least the God of War fans, Ready at Dawn Studios did not rest on their laurels. Building the Ready at Dawn engine uh, for our first game really was, more than anything, a, a challenge for ourselves to figure out if we would be able to do it. And as we released the last game and we pushed the engine as far as we could with 1.0, but of course with the, the requirements of a game like God of War, we knew that 1.0 was not going to be enough, so a huge part of that early development was, was making Ready at Dawn engine 2.0. We poked and prodded almost every system in the entire engine. We've optimized the render Our animation systems. have been com almost completely redone. As much as the first one helped us to start on you know, the foundations of a game, the second one will really, really show people a few things that this hardware is able to do. And I believe right now, I'm, I'm very proud to say that uh, the guys here actually has, they have pulled off probably what's the best technology on PSP that's available right now. <laughs> Ultimately, the game is about brutal combat, and the team wanted to make sure the controls were seamless. Adapting the PSP controls from the PS2 version was a challenging task, but it's not an impossible task. We just had to really approach it in a very simple manner, go to the elements, and start simplifying controls, maybe doubling up controls here and there. For example, Dodge went from the analog, which, uh, uh, which I think would be natural for people to do now, having played two God of War games, to, uh, to being a, a button combination that first, at the very first day, felt a little awkward, but uh, I think it took us about a week to really you know, play more and more and realize that it, was, it came to us naturally. And now sometimes when I play God of War 2 on the PS2, I have a tendency to use that button combination. No matter what platform you're on, Kratos is all about rage. We're not holding any punches with, with Kratos. All the combos that you're expecting are going to be there. Some new ones are going to be there. Some slight variations to the more extended combat maneuvers, especially with things like parry and a lot of the more complex maneuvers. For example, one of the combos that's implemented already in the very early stages of the game is a type of windmill move. <laughs> which is really cool because I don't think you've ever got that out of God of War really before. And what you get out of this is a very focused attack, something that you can target on one enemy that will do a lot of damage, but you have to be careful to use it in, in a big group, for example, because at the end of that move, you end up in a very vulnerable position. And what we wanted to give with that was a tactic, a strategy to use that move. <laughs> The puzzles in God of War are definitely a very important element of the gameplay. 
there's a lot of action, and we need to break up some of that with some downtime. And one of the good ways of doing that is by giving the players something that they have to do where they actually have to exercise their mind. We range from simple puzzles where we have something as simple as to be able to progress, you need to pull a switch. But in order to pull a switch, you have all these enemies coming in, so you need to stop the enemies. It turns into a, a chain of puzzles. In this game, we have some very large, overarching story puzzles that force the player to actually come back and try something over and over again, you know, solving the smaller pieces of a much larger whole puzzle. Never before has the brutal power of the gods been available in the palm of your hands. I want to see God of War on the PSP because I'm a God of War fan and I'm a PSP fan, but to really get that power in your hand, to be able to play something on the go with the power of the PSP is something that you can't get with any other portable console. God of War Chains of Olympus is truly an epic game. It's big, we have tons of animation, tons of art, and we really aren't pulling any punches when we do this game. It's going to be just pixel for pixel God of War.